Welcome back to the Unreal for Unity Developers Tutorials. In this video, we're going to continue forth with the Material Editor, and we're going to kind of jump into some more advanced things. So we're going to zoom through kind of quick. I just wanted to introduce these things to you so that you know they're there, and uh, you can kind of get an idea for the power that Unreal's Material Editor has. So let's just jump in and just start making stuff. I'm going to create a new folder in the Content folder here, and we're just going to call this Decals. You can probably guess what we're going to be doing in this video now. So what we're going to end up doing is creating a deferred decal, and then we're going to take that decal and make it a little more powerful. So let's right click and create a new material, and we'll call this mdecal. So let's open it up. Now, we remember from the last couple videos, there's different material domains. And if we click on the drop down over here, we'll see that deferred decal is one of them. So let's click Deferred Decal, and you'll notice immediately we get an, an error in this over here saying that the blend model should be translucent. So let's do what it's saying there and change the blend mode over to translucent as well. So now it's happy. Okay, so we're all good. What we're going to want to do for this decal is we're just going to make this really simple. We're not going to get into normal maps and anything special. We're just going to create a, our, our first decal. So what we need is, of course, a texture. So if we right click, and type in texture you can see you'll eventually find the texture sample parameter 2d so this is our texture and we see we get a little default texture in here which is perfect we'll just leave that in there now if you remember we have our rgb and then our full vector 4 output here so let's just take that drag it into base color and we're going to take this and drag it into emissive so our emissive and our base will be the same and I mean, technically you don't really have to do this. It just makes the decal have some emissive properties. So let's save that out. And one thing I want to do here is just give this a slightly better name than none. We'll call it texture. Okay, so congratulations. You just created your first decal shader. Super easy. This is worlds different than trying to do decals in Unity. So now that we have that material, let's actually use it. So if we go up into our modes panel and just search for decal, of course, Unreal has a deferred decal here for us. We'll drag that into the scene and let's just position it. So I'm going to just put this up here for a second and you can see we basically have a volume here and you'll see we have this purple wiener going down there in the bottom. I'll just change to the rotation transform tool so you can see the purple wiener better. So that's going to be the direction that we want the decal to be projected onto. So as you can see on the bottom, we'll project it like this. Now, if we were to put this over here on the wall with the wiener looking down, we're going to end up getting some really odd results. You can see it does not look how we expect it to. So let's just drag that back over here. We'll leave it like this. And let's get rid of that material because we have our own material for this. So in our decal uh, details over here, you can see we have decal material. So let's search for M underscore decal. And damn, there you go. Congratulations, you just created a deferred decal in Unreal Engine. Now, of course, that's not all for this one. That's a little too quick. So we're going to expand on this a little bit. And we're actually going to make our decal be able to work with a texture atlas. Let's just start off by right clicking over here. And if you look in the materials and texture section, you'll see there's a thing called a material function. And if we look at the little tooltip, we see a material function is a collection of material expressions that can be reused in different materials. So that sounds good. I'll explain that in a second. So let's just call it MF underscore texture atlas. What we're going to do is we're just going to make a function and in Unreal we're allowed to actually create material functions so when we create a function a material function it can be used by any other materials so this is kind of a, a reusable concept the texture atlas so if we put it in a function we can then use it in as many different materials as we want let's jump in here and just create this material function I'm not going to go too much into the details of the math behind this so just uh, follow along and if you want to look this up you can uh, look up texture atlasing it's it's a pretty simple concept uh, feel free to google that what we're going to be doing is working with a texture coordinate so let's start off by grabbing one so 
but we've done this before. This is just our texture coordinate that's going to be the input for the material. What we're going to need is a couple inputs to this function. We're going to need to know the size of the atlas, and we're going to also need to know the row and the column that the user wants to, to be displaying. So this is a material function. So if we type in function, we spell it correctly, you'll see that there's function input here. So we're going to need two of these. I'm just going to copy paste this. You can see it defaults to a vector three. It's not exactly what we're looking for. So we can change that right over here in the input type. Now for the atlas size, we're just going to go with a scalar. So for simplicity, that means that the texture should be uh, an atlas that is square with the same number of rows and columns. We'll call this something useful like atlas size. And then let's jump over to our other parameter. And this one is actually going to need to be a vector two. And the reason for that is uh, we're going to need to know the row and the column that we want to be displaying. So let's just call this row comma column. So it's clear from the outside what we're looking for. Okay, I'm just going to run through all the math here. Again, this is very basic and it's available all over the web. So if you don't know about texture atlases and how they work, just uh, look it up after you're done making your material. So we're gonna go ahead and take the texture coordinate and we're gonna wanna divide that by the size of the atlas. And then we're gonna want to add that to something else that we're gonna calculate momentarily. And this is actually going to be our output. Okay, so for the other end of this, let's take our atlas size and this time we're going to actually want to divide the atlas size into one. Okay. Now let's take this result. We're going to multiply it by the rows and columns. We're going to add that to our previous result, and that's it. We're done. So let's save this. We can actually preview this result in here. We can actually preview. You can see each of these inputs has, has a preview node in front of it. We'll just do a real quick example of how to set that up, just in case uh, in the future you're messing around with material functions and you actually want to be able to have something to look at while you're doing it. The preview is not very useful right now, seeing as how we're taking in a texture coordinate and spitting out a texture coordinate. I'm going to change the name of the output to something a little more useful also. So we have outlet, output atlas UV. Okay, so in order to be able to have something to preview, we're going to need a texture. So let's grab a texture sample. And over here, we can select a texture from our project. Now, we don't actually have any atlases in the project at the moment. So we change the view options. We can actually go in here and say show engine content. And showing the engine content, we'll be able to see everything that's that's in Unreal Engine. So there's a they have a concept called a flipbook. And they happen to have a little flipbook texture you could see as a texture atlas, which is perfect for what we're doing here. So we'll just grab that and that's what we'll use for our preview. So now you can right click a node and you can say start previewing node. So now we're previewing the texture sample. And I can see it's not showing anything and that's for a variety of reasons, but the first thing is let's set up our input axis or our input atlas size so that it's two. And now you can see we're getting a one, which if we look at this texture, we have one, two, three, four. So let's test our row and column here. So if we change the row, the column is X, then it goes to two. So if we did this correctly, this should be a four. Okay, perfect. All done. So we've just created a reusable function that lets us take in a texture and get the UV coordinates for a specific row and column. Now jumping back to our decal. Now decal is very basic here. We're just going to make it a little bit more complex by letting us use texture analysis with it. Take this texture, we'll leave this over here, but instead of this preview texture, let's grab that flipbook texture and stick that in here for our preview. 
and there you go. And now we have the one, two, three, four. So our goal here is to be able to just display one chunk of this atlas. We have that neat node that we just created. So let's just drag it in. Okay, so this is going to be the UVs that we want to use is what we calculate in our texture atlas function. You can see it's giving us an error just saying that we're missing our atlas size. And that's in the row column and that's totally fine because we haven't wired them up yet. But let's wire them up. We're going to need the atlas size first, which is a scalar. And we're going to want to make this a parameter so that we can access it from our material instances, if we recall from the last videos. So this will call atlas size. And of course I dragged it into the wrong pin, so let's change that so it's correct. And then we're going to want to create two more scalars. So what I did there is just held down the S key and then clicked to shortcut to create a scalar. So for this one, we'll call it column. This one we'll call row. Now we need a vector two as our input here, and we have two scalars. So what we're going to want to do for that is use the append vector node. And what the append vector node does is it takes in the two different scalars and outputs a vector that's just the two of them appended to each other. So drag that in here. Click Save. Now we have our row, column, and atlas size all defaulting to zero. So we're going to end up with nothing. Let's change our atlas size to two. And then we should get our top left one. Let's just double check that everything works. Let's change this to a one for the column. And indeed it does. Awesome. So we are all set. We have just created a deferred decal and a texture atlas function. And we have a neat little material that we can use for our decals. So let's just go ahead and apply this. So remembering when we create parameters, for a material, we actually want to take that material and create an instance to use. So we have our decal instance now, and let's use this material instance over here. So I'm just going to line this up. Now let's open up our material instance. And now this is where we change our parameters. So Atlas size is fine. Let's check the box next to column and row so that we can change these. Now two is going to wrap around to one, so it, it, it actually or wrap around to zero. So it's going to be the same as as the default. But if we go to one, there we go. All right, there we go. And if we had a, a different atlas here, we can click the check box and then select our atlas for our different. Uh, our different decal effects and we could have a whole bunch of different bullet holes for example or dirt and grime and you can just jump in here and randomly select a column and row for your in your materials and have a lot of variation all right that's it for this video thanks for watching